Hello, and welcome back to Partnership Live. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. I hope this year goes really well for everyone, and you had a really good 2022. So welcome back to Partnership Live, our monthly discussion with healthcare leaders who are reshaping the health and wellness of our New Jersey residents. I'm Marie Carlin C.S. Tulsi, President and CEO at the Partnership for Maternal Child Health of Northern New Jersey. And I'm so happy today to be joined by Kim Birdsell, who is the Executive Director at Health Coalition of Passaic County. So we can say HCPC, right, Kim? Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you for joining me. I want to, um, before we start and talk about HCPC and what a wonderful job you guys are doing, I um, want to get to know you just a tiny bit. So if you were not the Executive Director of HCPC, what do you think you'd be doing? <laughs> Uh, that's probably the hardest question that we'll get to today. Um, so, you know, I do believe I'm where I'm supposed to be. Uh, definitely always wanted to do something impactful and collaborative. So I feel very grateful and blessed uh, for this position. Um, you know, my father always said, take notes because you have these crazy experiences in your life, right? Like family vacations or trips or other things. So I joke that one day I'm going to write a sitcom. So maybe I would be a, a sitcom writer based on some experiences if I wasn't doing this. We'll see. Okay, we'll get back to that later. <laughs> Here we go. Interesting. Very interesting. So let's start and talking about ACPC and what a wonderful organization it is. So the Health Coalition of Passaic County is one of four regional health hubs, right? And that's yes. from the, um, the ACOs, is that, that correct? And yes. we have um, the Healthcare Coalition of Passaic County, we have Greater Newark, um, Trenton Health Team, and Candom Coalition, right? So can you tell us what is HCPC? Sure, sure. Um, so the mission of our organization at the Health Coalition of Passaic County, or HCPC, is really to work to continually improve and advance health equity in our region. Um, we really want to advance quality of life, and our primary focus is on residents of the greater Passaic County area, but really Patterson and the municipality of Passaic. And so one of the ways that you know we're doing that is through this regional health hub structure. Um, there's really four components to the regional health hubs. We each do things in our own way, but we work as an essential partner to the state, uh, particularly the Office of Medicaid. We um, are really focused on integrating data and doing real-time analytics in order to inform priorities. Uh, our goal is to not just convene community partners, but really to unify the community around the issues that we're seeing so that we can advance positive change. And then we also have some uh, programs, maybe some pilots or innovative programs. Ours particularly focus on direct care coordination with community health workers. And we also do a lot of work uh, on health education to advance health literacy, uh, nutrition, physical activity, et cetera. So um, I think those are really the four pillars, strategic partnership with the state, data analytics and integration, um, community unification, and really being an incubator for, for new programs. So talking about being an incubator for new programs, can you dive deep a little into that and share with us what programs you provide, what type of programs you provide? Absolutely. So I really think our programming arm is divided into two main categories, one being what I would call direct care coordination, where we have teams of community health workers, um, which I cannot emphasize enough what an amazing, uh, I think, an important and critical aspect to the future of, of public health and healthcare in our communities is. So we have Great teams of community health workers who do direct care coordination, depending upon the project or the focus area. Currently, we have a program called Pathways to Success for Seniors. And so that focuses on individuals over the age of 60 in Patterson or Passaic. Um, it is funded by uh, the Henry and Marilyn Taub Foundation. And we work to address social isolation and also um, fall risk within the home, as well as connection to other social supports or other needs. We uh, also have a large program called the Horizon Neighbors in Health Project, which um, really works with Horizon members who may need some additional supports and care coordination. And so we have a large team of community health workers working with that population. Um, 
We've also done a lot of work with maternal health and really excited to be launching a program as we move forward called Pathways to Success for Women. I can get into that a little bit later, but uh, similar to seniors, but really focusing on women ages 18 to 34 prior to pregnancy. Uh, we want women to be as healthy as they can be. Um, and, and we have great partners like you that work with folks, you know, once, once, they, uh, once they do become pregnant. And then the other arm, as I shared, there's two, direct care coordination, and then it's really health education. Um, it, you know, and that goal is to advance health literacy. So we do community conversations. We have a program called Faith and Prevention, where we work with faith-based partners to provide a curriculum of nutrition and physical activity, um, but also uh, resources, right? We don't just wanna talk with folks in the community, we wanna give them effective tools in order to empower individuals to, um, to improve their situation. So those are probably our two main programs. Um, but you know, I'm happy to unpack, unpack any of that a little bit more. It is just um, such a plethora and such a robust, valuable work that you're doing. I know that we'll be putting links um, later on uh, so that people can, can log on and get some more information about those different programs. But you know, one of the things that you talked about is the the data or the data analytics. And that is so important to really prioritize which programs that you're using. So can you give us an example about how your data analysis really led to successful um, innovations and initiatives? You know, absolutely. Um, and thank you for asking. I think it really is a critical uh, pillar to the regional health hubs and really to all of us as we've moved forward with learning more about data and how that those insights can be best used to, to make positive change. So you know, over the course of our work, uh, HCPC was uh, formed really in 2017. So we've we've grown very quickly and, and developed very quickly. And recently, we've made a lot of advancements in developing a data model. Um, what this does is it integrates clinical, non-clinical, social vulnerability index census level data into this model so that it can help inform our priorities. And I would say that a recent example um, that I'd love to share is in related relation to housing vulnerability. Um, I mentioned we have a program that focuses on seniors. Uh, actually, it's only folks 60 and up, so not necessarily seniors <laughs> who live in Patterson and Passaic. And in our work in the field, our community health worker team really saw these housing challenges. They could see it firsthand um, where folks are really, really struggling. And so what we did was we were able to look at this integrated data through the model that was developed that gave us even more insight into the true range and the depth of this issue that folks in our communities are facing. Um, you know, because the pandemic wasn't just a health risk for the most vulnerable, including the, the older population and others, but this post-pandemic economy, um, you know, especially with increased housing costs, is hitting our vulnerable communities um, so hard. And so the data helped us, you know, to really understand particular geographies because um, we're in a situation where we're pushing people further into poverty, right? And, and maybe social isolation and all of this impacts premature birth, quality of life. And so our data showed us, you know, where some of these chronic conditions and the overlaying of, of census vulnerability, uh, housing vulnerability data and and led us actually to want to elevate this issue. Um, so it really laid the foundation for us to bring forward um, a, a health equity roundtable. Uh, it was the first in our series that we are planning. And because of that work, you know, we were able to shine a little bit more of a light on how can we take steps to make improvements in regard to housing vulnerability um, to address that social determinant in our in our in our region. Um, so we, we still have a lot of work to do and next steps. But I think that's a great example of how data integration, not just looking at one aspect, but putting pulling this all together can help hopefully advance true change and improvement in our communities. That's really wonderful. Um, I do want to get some more information about the data, but I remember during one of the meetings, you specifically shared a success where um, I believe it was a CHW went into the home of a senior. Do you, do you mind sharing that? Because that is just so impactful when you hear the real life stories of what people are going through. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's heartbreaking. And uh, we have just amazing folks on our team um, who are seeing similar situations over and over again, where, you know, folks might have just gotten out of the hospital, they need additional support or having financial challenges, and then are living in housing conditions that, you know, we had uh, one individual that they had a one room basement apartment was all they could afford. It was a couple still working no kitchen, um, a shared space. I'm sure, you know, likely not a legal housing, but you also run that that risk of uh, elevating these issues to cause change and, and winding up with folks who might be evicted um, and, you know, be worse off than where you started. So, um, you know, we wanted to use our experience to just start to put a little pressure to say things need to be done better. Landlords need to be you know, responsive. We had an individual with a gaping hole in the ceiling um, that wasn't repaired and it's tarp. So, uh, you know, we do what we can, but we're hoping that this forum and, and spotlighting this a little bit can really help to advance some positive policy change, um, both for now and in the future. So you're making a huge difference. Now, have you seen any specific challenges in Passaic County as opposed to what we're seeing in other areas of, of North Jersey? You know, our work really focuses specifically on Southern Passaic County. Our primary two geographies of focus are the communities of Patterson and Passaic. Um, and so some of the issues that we're seeing may be different in other regions of Passaic County or certainly in other parts of Northern New Jersey. But what I would say is a major challenge here is really all health equity. Um, you know, that impact is so broad. It's things like we're talking about like housing insecurity, but it's also higher rates of diabetes, obesity, hypertension. Um, it's about, you know, some mental health challenges, gun violence, um, disparity, certainly in maternal and child health outcomes, as, as I'm sure you certainly are well aware. Um, you know, and something we're really concerned about moving forward as to a specific challenge here is the next phase of the pandemic, which is people keeping their, their coverage under Medicaid. Um, you know, there's two important aspects to this uh, that I'd love to elevate for your audience. One is the New Jersey Cover All Kids component, which is that anyone who is income eligible, any children under the age of 19 can be enrolled and receive healthcare benefits. Uh, I'd be happy to provide those resources after, but New, Jer New Jersey Citizen Action has been a great group with us and they can assist for free enrollment. And the other is, I hope folks start to realize um, this is really critical. New Jersey Family Care, there are renewal packets that are being sent out to everybody who currently has Medicaid coverage. It is critical that anyone who is currently receiving Medicaid make sure their information is updated with New Jersey Family Care their address and their telephone number. And the reason is, is because these renewal packets are gonna be mailed out and folks need to be able to be very responsive so that they can keep their coverage. Um, if they've changed addresses or changed contact information, they may be in a position where they're not gonna get the renewal packet. And we don't want individuals to lose coverage because they're not responding. So I, I can't emphasize it enough. Everyone is gonna need to reapply. And those that don't, could lose their healthcare coverage. And I just think that would be devastating um, to so many people. So uh, again, I'll be happy to share those resources. We're gonna be doing a lot of work um, with our partners in this regard and really need to get the word out. So folks um, just update their information right now. That's it. And be responsive when they receive things in the mail. And you, you were talking about with your partners, I wanna talk about maternal child health. Um, in, in a couple, but what you were talking about with all of the upstream problems with health, um, with diabetes and all the comorbidities, which of course affect maternal health. But when you're talking about working with the partners specifically now where it's so critical about re-enrolling and um, making sure that these 3 million people are covered, talk to us about the collaborations, the convening that you do, the work that is so critical. Can you talk about how bringing those organizations together are really life-saving you know, for, for our constituents and what Yeah, I'd be happy to, you know, I'm so proud of the work of our our community partners. You know, we we look at our role um, 
we all have the same mission, right? To address the social determinants of health, to improve and advance quality of life in our region. And we all know that we can't do that together. I mean, we can't do that um, individually. We have to do that together. And we probably need a lot more folks to join us in, in this in this work. So um, the HCPC over time, we started with a community advisory board, but we changed that name to community action board. Um, we want to drive change. And so right now we have over 60 partner organizations who come together, um, both formally and informally. We do meet formally. Um, on a quarterly basis to really elevate these issues, collaborate, see what work is going on. And I wanna say to really, again, power up our partners. Um, in that structure, we have developed dedicated task force teams that focus on particular topics um, as well as different programs. And so we right now have seven task force teams. Um, and you know, so we, we advance that work. I don't know if you want, did me, uh, Maria Carl, to give you any example. Um, Absolutely. Great. I really want people to get um, a, a sense of the really deep work that HCPC is doing, because you hear about the health hubs and you hear about data analysis, but what's the impact? You know, because we're all, like you said, working together. Some of us are working in silos and we're trying to convene everyone, but what is the impact of the work? And I do believe that um, HCPC is extremely impactful because I hear the stories and I see them. So I'd really like you to illuminate you know, all of the impactful work that you're doing. I'll do my best. I, our tagline is it's a lot. So I feel like I'm always missing something, but I think a few really good examples of um, collaboration and impact, you know, one is uh, back at the height of the Omicron surge, um, we actually were able to facilitate a hot meal distribution program within the community of Patterson. Over the course of seven weeks, including the holidays, um, through our partnerships, we had about eight partners. We were able to successfully distribute almost 25,000 hot meals. Um, and we only did that in 21 distribution days. So it wasn't a seven day a week operation. It was you know, a few days a week. Uh, we had some partners that were able to provide us with these hot meals and we were able to distribute it out to the community. And so very impactful. We have some stories and feedback from individuals who received these that, you know, it changed their lives that, um, you know, and it might seem minor to folks who don't struggle like this, but, you know, think about, you know, just even saving some, saving some money. We had folks who said they've never had a restaurant meal before. Um, and so, you know, I, I also share with our team that everything you do matters. I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect. So you might not be around to see the impact, but you know, it, it, small things can make a big difference for folks. Um, I think another big example was we launched a public health partners program or an ambassador program. You can call it different things. We're currently in the third phase of that. And so we worked with about six strategic partners in each phase. The first phase, we really focused on increasing COVID vaccination rates, primarily in Patterson and Passaic. And um, I would have to dig back to our data to see the percentage, but we were very successful in reaching specific zip codes where there were lower rates and, and working with our partners to be out there in the community, talking to folks, you know, answering questions, facilitating dialogue, because at that time, you know, many folks just really needed to learn more and to have that opportunity to, to be heard. Um, we then kind of transitioned into providing more resources about COVID related conditions so that we could help advance health literacy, right? Like the, the relationship between diabetes and COVID. Um, now we're focusing on mental health resources and uh, really trying to elevate this program called ABLE2, which is available. It's a free program that provides telecounseling, telehealth counseling services to anybody who is a resident of Patterson um, who's interested in receiving these services. So again, I'll provide that link for you as well. Um, but we're trying to get out into the right geography. So collaboration with these partners to, to reach deep. Uh, and I'd say two other really exciting examples of collaboration. One is uh, which you guys were very much involved in. Uh, on January 27th, we had a maternal resource day um, through our Healthy Women Task Force team. That came together in six weeks, um, which again, I guess something around the holidays. We, we were quickly around the holidays. Uh, but, you know, through divine intervention, which I'm also a huge believer in, we were able to secure 700 packages of diapers to be brought into the community. 
Uh, there were about 15 vendors that participated. We were hosted by Agape Ministries Church in Patterson. And, you know, this partnership, we were able to highlight all these great programs, including the doula work from the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health um, of Northern New Jersey. And so, you know, just just a lot. As I said, it's a lot. I have more and more, but I'll, I'll pause there. It's definitely a lot. So, you know, since we made our far way into it, let's talk about maternal and child health and some of the ways that uh, we've partnered in some of the ways that you've improved maternal health outcomes. Well, I really hope that we've helped to contribute to this um, because, you know, I am a big believer. We have amazing organizations such as the partnership. And so we want to power up and, and collaborate and assist. So I would say we've partnered um, in lots of different ways, small and large. Uh, definitely feel like uh, promoting the doula program here in Patterson has been a lane that we're able to assist in facilitating and elevating that work. Certainly not doing the work, but, but being a partner and elevating it. Uh, we've also worked with St. Joseph's Health in Patterson. Uh, we did a perinatal insights project and learning really, um, and I think again, elevating and amplifying the voice of women, particularly black moms um, who do not feel seen or heard. Uh, and, and how do we fix that? And how can we create this forum, which came out of this work actually, uh, there was a forum and workshops where we had women um, through St. Joseph Center for Innovation come and talk with physicians and with funders and with, you know, so, so bridging that gap and elevating that voice. Um, we've done a lot of data analysis and learned about particular geographies and zip codes where there were higher rates of preterm births. Um, so digging into like, why is that? And we were able to do some pilot projects in those geographies. Um, I think our lane is to focus a little bit more on upstream actions, right? So, so where our goal is to help support and empower women, even prior to pregnancy. Right. Um, and, and, and in that regard, I'm really excited about this new program we're going to start. Uh, we were fund, received a grant from Quest uh, called Quest for Health Equity. It's a new program that they have. And in that two-year program, we're going to be working with women in Patterson and Passaic, ages 18 to 34, um, that just feel they may need some additional supports. Uh, we'll work with them, with community health workers, to address their social determinants of health, connect them with sustainable and existing resources, maybe it's education, maybe it's housing, maybe it's food insecurity, whatever individuals will need, um, and, and really build in that capacity to help folks improve uh, their health and, and get them the resources they need prior to pregnancy. So um, I think it's important to elevate here too that studies have shown that the health of women in a community actually drives the health of the entire community. Uh, population health. Yep. And so, you know, I think for our, ourselves, upstream action that we can help um, empower and, and position folks for better outcomes and working with partners like you who once individuals can, you know, retain the services and the programs that you provide um, really serves us all well. So very impactful. And, you know, we are tethered together, whether mm -hmm. we're talking about women's health, population health, we cannot have one without the other. So it is so important, the work that we do together. And I know people always think maternal health, it's only for people who are pregnant, but no, we're talking about reproductive health, reproductive education. We're talking about parents as teachers. We're talking about our fellows program um, that's in Essex County, but all of that in a whole and working with you and your maternal health initiatives really does help to um, improve the health of the population. So it is just, such a great partnership um, and convening and collaboration on your part. You're really a great partner. We enjoy working with you and all the wonderful things that you do. But I do know with all of the wonderful things, um, there are some barriers, right? So if you had a magic wand, um, what would you hope to accomplish in the next five to eight years? Oh my, I say that all the time. You know, if I had a magic wand, I would do X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, if I look out on the horizon, I think, you know, I've been called a Pollyanna before and um, I, I take it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I think what I would love to to see happen is really that everybody has what they, what they need to live a happy and healthy life. You know, I think, unfortunately, we have created so many barriers. Uh, we've overcomplicated our systems and I would love to be able to 
uh, get the right people in the right places to start to remove those barriers, simplify life for individuals. Because um, I think, you know, I've often said, you know, I, I come from a public health background and I think public health is an amazing uh, opportunity for change. And, and one of the, the hardest areas of public health because you can educate folks and some people will change their behavior and you can legislate and people will change their behavior. But but what we really need to do is build communities that empower people so to want to live healthier lives. Yeah. So so I guess I would love to see communities that are built to, to do that. That sounds wonderful. And that's something that we're doing brick by brick. Right? Absolutely. At a time, it's, it's really important. I see our time is closely getting getting to the end and there's so much more for us to talk about but before we end i would like you talked about writing a sitcom <laughs> if you were to write a sitcom of your career what would that title be oh a sitcom of my career i don't i don't think it would be a sitcom <laughs> or a book or an album um what would the title be yeah let's go more with a book um I think it would be grateful. I, I, I really do. Um, I think this work is so challenging. I mean, there are days, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything or any anybody who's listening who, who is in this work that it's easy, but it's definitely gratifying. Um, I think it's critically important. I think we all have an obligation to try to make the world a better place. Uh, and we can all do that in different ways, whatever our gifts or talents are, right? Um, sitcoms bring tons of joy. So I think those folks are, are, are making the world a better place too. But for me, I think grateful. Uh, I've had amazing opportunities. I've worked with amazing people and hopefully have, you know, planted the seeds for some positive things and been part of that butterfly effect. So. Absolutely. Wonderful butterfly effect. Such a great way to end. And we are definitely grateful. So I would put that on my uh, on my mirror every time I wake up to make sure I think of all the things that I'm grateful for. And I'm grateful for having you as our first guest for 2023. Very insightful, wonderful things that you're doing at APPC and I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Uh, you as well, Marie Carl. Thanks. Thank you for joining us at um, Partnership Live and we will see you next month. Take care. Bye-bye.